Look, I won't go into all the physics, but basically uh, it, it, conventional x-ray tubes have a hot filament. And all the, the w w just like an old-fashioned light bulb, uh, the filament is unreliable as, as, as well as not very energy efficient. Our, our technology is, is a solid state uh, carbon nanotube, uh, which is kind of like a, a, an LED by comparison. But the most important thing is it allows us to shrink the size of the x-ray tube and electronically control it very precisely, which gives us a, a number of applications. Obviously, if, if, if the, the x-ray tube is the important part of any x-ray device, and the smaller it is, the smaller you can make the device, and, and therefore uh, the lighter and the simpler and the cheaper and the more, more reliable. Uh, our first, uh, first product is a bedside imager. Uh, bedside imaging used, used in, particularly in ICUs, where patients on life support, and you can't unplug him to go down to radiology. So the x-ray comes bedside. Uh, we're competing against uh, products that are 600 kilograms. Ours is 95. Um, so uh, much cheaper, simpler, easier to, to use, faster to get in. We've been in market now originally with our global distribution partner, CareStream Health, uh, for uh, two years. Uh, we've got over 200 systems in nearly 30 countries around the world. And uh, the cold cathode technology is proving itself because we've not got one single warranty claim on all those installed units yet. So we're very proud of that. Uh, there's a military application of that. Uh, the, this first product was taken to market by CareStream, the Rover we call it, which is the MicroX product. Uh, and uh, you saw we uh, last week we got our, our 510K approval for our own product uh, with our own uh, detector and software. Uh, which we're now free to, uh, to to sell, and that moves us higher up the value chain. Uh, we have a number of variants, but one of them is for the military. Uh, one of the reasons I'm here in, in Brisbane today is uh, we just won an innovation award from the Australian Army. Uh, we were just selected by them for their new deployable hospital. Uh, obviously, lightweight is really important in a deployable situation, so that's uh, uh, a big market that we're working up, and uh, particularly the uh, we've got our eye on trying to convince the US Army to buy as well, because uh, they use a lot more x-rays than the Australian Army do. Um, next thing is, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, something from the military asked us to, to, to look at, is, a, is a, an x-ray camera for looking at IEDs, improvised explosive devices. Uh, the idea is you've, you've got a backpack, suspicious parcel. You want to know whether it's a bomb or not. Uh, X-ray is how they how they find what's inside, but obviously you don't want to go over the top of it to take the X-ray with a conventional source. Our our device here works like a camera. You it, it's it can be picked up by the robot. The robot can go in and literally, like Superman vision, just see inside the the uh, uh, the parcel, see what's there, and if it is a bomb, how to dis dispose of it. Uh, so this product's in development at the moment. Uh, we will be doing our first, well, we've done some prototype trials, proved that we can get the imaging we want. And by uh, Christmas, we'll be doing our first customer demos. By this time next year, we'll be in sales. Uh, and uh, that looks like a very, very profitable product for us. We're projecting 70 or 80% gross margin on, uh, on sales of that. And all the, uh, all the people in bomb disposal reckon that every, every bomb disposal team around the world will want one or two of these. So uh, quite exciting. Uh, big news last year, we got selected by the uh, Department of Homeland Security in the United States uh, to design the next generation of airport checkpoint. Uh, the uh, Transportation Safety Administration have long had this dream about uh, the checkpoint being self-service, just like passport control went from somebody who looked at your passport to, to automatic document reading. Uh, we incorporate that with uh, uh, because our technology miniaturizes the X-ray of the hand luggage uh, into a into a portal, and they've selected us to design that portal, which is really exciting because that gives us a pull position. And two years from now, when we've completed that uh, uh, design project, um, if the TSA like it, we're in pull position to to do uh, airport security and replace the the long queues and and. Uh, conveyor belts of traditional security. And uh, lastly, we got a grant uh, uh, a couple of months ago from the Medical Research Future Fund 
for uh, miniaturizing a, a CT scanner. Uh, basically, we can make a CT scanner small enough and light enough that it can go in every ambulance. Uh, it's for producing a CT image of a brain, of a, brain, of a, uh, a skull, uh, to look for strokes. Uh, you can't, with strokes, time, as they say, time is brain. You're losing millions of brain cells every minute a stroke goes untreated. Uh, if every ambulance had a CT in it, uh, you can uh, produce an image which you need to diagnose the stroke uh, at the point of pickup and, and save valuable minutes. Uh, the, the problem with diagnosis is that you uh, need to know whether it's a bleed or a clot. You've got clot busting or, or, or coagulating drugs, and obviously if you get the diagnosis wrong, uh, you can kill the patient. So they won't start to treat a stroke until they've got a CT diagnosis. If we can bring that to every ambulance, that's a huge, huge global market. A lot of things in the pipeline um, in terms of sales of our, our mobile DR, uh, getting the European uh, regulatory approval. Uh, we're hoping in the next uh, couple of months really opens up the European and Australian markets uh, for the rover. Uh, that's really important. We've got the second generation of our bedside imaging, which has got four times as much power as the launch product. Uh, that's in the final stages of testing, and uh, that will be uh, uh, that'll be going for regulatory approval in the next few months as well. Uh, by Christmas, we'll be doing customer demos of the uh, X-ray camera for IEDs, and by this time next year, we'll be in in sales. So those those are the really big things that will uh, that will move us forward. Great. Okay. Um, I'll just open up to questions from the network. If anybody's got any questions for Peter, I've, I've got one. <clears throat> uh, Peter, uh, the competitive landscape and the and the patents or whatever you know, IP protection you've got on the nanotube X ray. Yeah, we've uh, we've patented the uh, we've patented the technology. Uh, it was developed in in Adelaide. Uh, there's a lot of people working on CNT solutions around around the world. Uh, we discovered developing our own, that they were all kind of barking up the wrong tree. Uh, so our patent uh, actually patents the, the aspect of a, of a high current emitter that, that really makes it work. So we're pretty comfortable with that. Um, I mean, there are lots of people trying to do what we've doing, spending a lot of money getting there, but uh, we, we reckon we're at least five or six years ahead of the nearest competitor. Uh, and, and that's why our strategy is to try and commercialize as many of these high margin products as quickly as we can just to, to get that commercial domination to stay ahead of the market.